Hey everyone, this is Ian from Unincorporated, and I wanted to welcome you to another great edition of our Higher Ed Happy Hour. Today, I'm here with Mark Hodgson. Mark's an author, an advisor, an executive coach, and he excels at helping executives and entrepreneurs build their personal brand and influence. And he has inspired teams from both the commercial and non-for-profit, sorry, not-for-profit worlds. Uh, he's here with us today to discuss the importance of brand building within higher education. And our plan, as I understand it, is to discuss branding at all levels. And that, that means including the faculty, the student, the administration, the degree program, and even the institution at large. So we've got a lot to cover. Mark, welcome to the show. Uh, Ian, it's, it's, it's fantastic to be here. Looks like we've got a bit of work to do. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. <laughs> I mean, as, as you know, branding is such a comprehensive effort in and of itself. And then we start to look at the institution of higher ed and we think, okay, branding at the institutional level, the degree level, the individual level, whether it's faculty or staff, it's a lot to cover. Uh, so why don't we just get started with maybe the, the broadest question, which is, you know, can you share some insights or from your perspective, why is personal branding even important at all? Why are we talking about personal branding within the constraints or the constructs of higher education? Well, I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's applicable. I think a lot of this is, is how to, how to, how to link, linking the linking higher education, the purpose of higher education, which is, which is to produce, you know, great citizens, contributors, business people, entrepreneurs, uh, et, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which means professionals in, 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 in the world. Uh, and we now live in a digital age, uh, which is, which is, uh, you know, accelerating at cra cra crazy pace. Um, and I think it's just an imperative that every single professional uh, has a personal brand, uh, which fundamentally, I, I like to say it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, our, it's our individual, our personal shop window to the world. Uh, and it lets the, know, lets the world know that we're open for business. And it was interesting in preparing for today's uh, podcast, you know, I think a, a, lot, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, maybe the, where, where the area of opportunity is, is, is to take academia is great, but it's also, as we know, it can be its own ivory tower, but academia of mm -hmm. itself um, is, is great. But what, where academia really uh, uh, creates value is, is as academia affects the outside world, society, markets, commerce, whatever. Um, and so the personal brand piece is really important that, that pe people are actually able to to tell the world what they do, how they how they create value. And I think that 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 is really important at an individual level, at a personal level, but also an, also at an organisational or institutional level. Uh, and, and in terms of the person, in terms of the per the personal brand, you know, um, we're in those days now where people, as they go through their careers, and I see that the academic piece is very much the foundation piece of many parts of our career. I mean, I went to university many years ago in the UK, and it's a foundation piece, but I've evolved and done many, many things since then. Um, so the, but the brand, we need to build a personal brand that belongs to us and is portable as we do these multiple careers and, you know, uh, project pieces, whether you stay in academia, uh, go out into the marketplace, become an employee, uh, become an entrepreneur. You know, we need, to, we need to take a brand with us in our backpack. Um, so it needs to be distinct. It needs to tell the world what we do, um, how, we, how we add value uh, and, just, and also why we're different. But crucially, it needs to belong to us, not an organization or an institution um, which is where many people's brands, most people either have no brand or their brand is, I, I work for Big Co. I'm, I'm the general manager at Big Co, which is kind of, that's okay all the time you work for Big Co, but what happens when you don't? So I think every, every single professional um, needs to have a personal brand. And therefore, getting back to your question, every single student or professor or, or um, faculty member needs to have a personal brand in the digital world um, that, is, uh, that tells the world they're open for business. Yeah. And just to add on or underline one of the points you made there, that personal brand needs to be flexible and moldable enough so that if they were to leave the institution or upon graduation or upon taking a new post at a different university, that that can actually travel with them, right? That they don't lose their sense of identity in that process, that it actually becomes part of their identity as it evolves from one place to the next. 
Exactly right. And so, you know, uh, I'm, I'm 58. So when I when I left university, it was probably assumed that you would you would you would take a you would take a role in a you know, probably a multinational or something. You might and you might have I'm, I'm making it two, three, four different companies in your in your 30 something year career. Now, as we know, that's probably going to be 20 or 30 different projects or employment pieces, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you, it doesn't make sense, does it? You, you need to have, you need, and, 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 and also you, when you go to a new thing, you don't want to start over. You, you want to actually, you want to build, 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 and your, 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 your brand, if you think about it, is a combination of um, your reputation. Uh, it's a, it's mm-hmm. a combination of your expertise. Um, it's a combination of your experience, but also um, we might come on and talk about this a little bit more. Um, I think the, the the third aspect of your brand is your essence, which is your which mm-hmm. is your passions, your characters, your traits, what you like, uh, what fires you up, uh, what what ticks you off. You're capturing that in an authentic brand, um, so your expertise, your experience, but also your essence is such a fantastic. Uh, it's a powerful, personal, and unique um, sort of package of who. You, if you think about it, that's who you really are. That's who who most of us are. If we can um, if we can show up in our personal brand. As who we really are, it's very it's very attractive to the right people, and we're, obviously we're looking for the right people who want to work with us, employ us, um, work for us, whatever. So the brand the brand is a, is you know, and and to not have a personal brand in a digital age where if you think about it, what's mo- what's the first thing that most of us do when when a new person we don't know comes across our radar, we'd probably jump onto uh, uh, jump onto the web. We might go, might Google them, or we might go onto a LinkedIn profile. Uh, and then we'll say, who's, who's this? Who's this lady? Who's this? Who's this? Who's this guy? Uh, and we 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 form an impression, don't we? Uh, mm-hmm. And if there's not much going on in their personal brand, well, we'll probably immediately pigeonhole these people as I know they're the mid level or they're low level or they're who are they? They're, and then we'll get for well, they're, instead we'll probably move on to someone else who oh, they look more energetic, they look they look more credentialed, uh, whatever. So that, I think the whole idea, probably the first, yeah, out of today's talk. Um, probably the first thing I'd encourage most people listening is if you haven't got a personal brand, start building one. And we'll talk more about what that actually entails. And I know it can sound scary, but start building one because I think in a you know in a, in a digital age, and it clearly is a digital age, for you not to have an online presence that tells the world what you do, who you are, how you add value, and why you're different um, is, is a massive, massive Im- impediment in any context. Yeah. So you said something earlier that really caught my attention. It's really the first time I've actually heard someone articulate it in this way, which is that academia adds value because of the transformational impact it has on the outside world, the way it shapes the outside world, as I believe how you put it, which we sometimes think of academia as this insulated free of any you know relationship or contextual uh, connection to the outside world and yet you're saying that's one of its most fundamental ways it adds value is the way it shapes the outside world i think that's very astute and extremely accurate and then i think about the idea of transformation on the outside world the experience as a student going through university going through your college degree that in itself is also very transformational. It is a transformational experience we, we go through as students in our two, four, six, eight year uh, program of choice. So in that process of being transformed, in that process of finding our essence, you said that a brand has essence, right? Essence, so yeah. as students are doing essence finding, <laughs> as they're essence. discovering themselves, Yes. How can faculty and administration help? What steps can they take in order to enhance that process of a student finding their personal brand? Well, I, 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 my, my, my view on I say as as we say, academia is in in and of itself a fabulous a fabulous thing. Probably, I, I suppose where the um, where the brand conversation really. Uh, it creates value. I think is it the probably the intersection, the interface between the academic institution and body, and the outside world, the commercial world, for example, mm-hmm. um, and and the you know the the I think the if the if the institutions can encourage uh, students and faculty to to really be present and in their brand, and when um, you know when we 
to be specific, one of the main what people people are going to develop their brand and show up in their brand and, and develop their own thinking is through creating content. So it's content commentary, um, and if there's there's multiple platforms, but probably the most obvious one is LinkedIn because there wouldn't there wouldn't be there wouldn't be many people listening to this podcast who aren't on LinkedIn. And if you aren't, you really probably should be uh, as a professional academic or a professor or whatever. Um, and it's you know if, if I think it's 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 as I see it I think there's a real opportunity for the the often inward looking um, academic um, institution to encourage the the uh, the the the, 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 um, the students uh, the undergrads to actually think more broadly about how how maybe how how maybe how they apply what they're learning post that on LinkedIn get involved in conversations on social media, maybe about applying what they're learning or discussing or, 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 or just really uh, bringing to life what they're talking about in, in relation to the external world, not just the academic, you know, not just the academic world, not just the things I need to do to get the grades to pass my courses, but actually say, okay, how do we apply this? So I think one of the major, you know, one of the main things that we, that we, that I would be encouraging undergraduates to do, for example, is to make sure you know, start to, you know, follow, um, follow your industry where are you going to go to start getting involved very early on in understanding what's the industry talking about and and also hopefully you're going to have new new insights learning new things new information new data as you start commenting early on in the piece to actually say actually well yeah we, we, you know, that problem you've currently got in in, in that area actually which is interesting we're, we're currently studying some new theories now at xyz uni um, and we think there's some opportunities to do this or it is, in another country they're doing that. So that might be something to think about. And I know as a, probably young uh, young undergrads that might feel, they might feel a little bit oh, you know, um, uh, overwhelmed by that, but it's a real opportunity. And the reality is at some point you're going to leave uni, you're going to want to get a job. So it's much better to have started that kind of discourse um, and interaction and learned the skills of creating commentary and creating content that's going to be engaging that people are going to want to um you're know, going to want to comment on and be attracted to um so i think that's a really solid thing that i'd be encouraging undergraduates to develop and so therefore if the institution can maybe set projects or generally encourage people to it's almost like i imagine i'm imagining here a circle where the institution's a circle but we've got to we've got to, we've got to encourage people to uh inter, inter you know interact at the intersection where the circle meets the rest of the world because that's the rest of the world where most of the people, not everyone, but most of the undergrads aren't going to stay in academia all their life. Most are going to leave. I think one of the best things we can do is help them um, through their brand and through their content, translate what they're learning, what they're thinking, as you said, how they're, how they're growing as adults and forming their own opinions, how we can uh, how we can actually take that out into the world rather than sort of existing in a bubble. Yeah. I, I think it's... Um quite profound the idea of developing the brand but also sharpening the identity sharpening the brand and then encouraging faculty and staff and administration to help the student really not only develop but sharp sharpen their point of view sharpen their point of view through the use of content and commentary yeah you know, i'm thinking about early writing assignments even you know you're taking your your writing credentials your your basic requirements first second year of college when did a faculty member ever come to you and say look what you're writing is a reflection of your personal identity this is a reflection of your point of view this is a way for you to start developing your own brand identity <laughs> So I think yeah. even just like kind of framing the assignments, even if they're not yeah. publishing to LinkedIn or otherwise, just even bringing some awareness to the fact that what you're creating content wise and commentary wise within class, within that safe haven is part of that development and sharpening process that you alluded to. Yeah. And I, I, th I think there's a couple of, a couple of ideas there. And the first one is that I, th I always think the best way to think is to write. You know, you, you, it's, it's just a, it's a honing process. It's a great way to get get your thinking sharper. But uh, I'm, I'm, I reflect. I did so. I did a I did a postgrad uh, degree. Um, oh, it would have been about fifteen years ago now. And I remember it was one of the one of the. It was it was completely online, which back then would have been quite. Um, uh, it was in change change leadership, uh, change management degree. 
Um, Very and- avant-garde of you to do something online back then. Well, yeah. ex- no, exactly. And, and yeah. what was interesting is we did a, we did a lot of um, a lot of the assessments where where uh, and I'm sure this is quite common now where, where 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 a question was posed and then there was a thread created. It was clunky a clunky interface. But it was a thread created, and then we we kind of you had to comment on on the on on not only you had to comment not only on the original question but you had to comment and evolve on the on the on the thread. So you, you got marked down if all you did was just answer. You said, no, no, you had. So, so the trick was to get in early before you had to, because then you just had to answer. <laughs> right. If you got in late, you had to answer, read the question and everyone's commentary. So it was an evolving conversation, um, and that, which is, uh, you know, I'm thinking, th- full, th- you know, fast forward 15 years, that's exactly what great co- you know, online commentaries, like LinkedIn, for example, can be like. So there's no reason at all. I mean, I, I think it would be a very valuable, I don't know if it's done, a very valuable exercise to actually set exercises, but actually put them out in the public domain. Here's, here, you know, here's uh, the, so the university can post, here's, here's a question we're currently working with in our year two, whatever, on touching, um, and then encourage the, the students to, to invite, to do that, exactly that, that commentary I'm talking about, but in a public arena. Because then you can attract commentary from experts, other people in, in, in the marketplace, um, and I think that'd be a really interesting, um, to an extent, it's a little bit of a social experiment, but I think it's, you know, it, it, what it does, it, te- it not only, it not only tests the thinking, um, of, it, of, of actually referring to what, whatever the coursework's about, but it also, when you actually invite, you, you invite the, the great unwashed public in as well to see what they think and they see what you're doing. And I think that also, that, that's a great way to, I, I guess, blend the academic process, but also with the real world process. And mm-hmm. also to, to in, 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 and I think that done well because we've talked later on about an organisational uh, and sorry the institutions brand. If the brand, if if, an, if a university is doing that in the public domain and encouraging people from the great yeah you know, the general public if you like to interact with stuff, I think and if that can be managed well, I think that'd be a great a great way to kind of to cross that divide, which I think and the and the, the personal brand piece and the content creation pieces is a very powerful way in basically getting getting the learning um, out of academia and into the world and we do that and and what we want to do is obviously equip our students to be successful um, we want want them to be um, have good levels of influence um, and, and and build respect and trust and all of these that's a great way to do it you know, rather than just walk around with a resume going hey I, I've got all these degrees and I'm very smart and the world goes okay now what you can do for, what are you going to do for me what are you what, do you, what else have you got and the brands, are, I think, a brands like um, a personal brand piece uh, in a digital world. You, know, you need, as well as your resume and all your credentials and so forth, you also need a great brand um, because the the piece that's important. You know, and we will come on to talk about this, I'm sure, is a big part of the brand is your ability to communicate in a, in a way that other people will respond to and react to in a world and in a world busy world where everyone's got too much going on it's very important to write and post and create videos and so forth in a way that people will engage with which is not an academic hey here's five thousand words with a gazillion references most people are not going to engage with that unless they're forced to so that's an interesting issue as well that is yeah there's a handful of good follow-up questions within there I think part of the conversation that you have online when you start to test or express your brand is the feedback and the inputs and maybe some um, critique or criticism against yep. the commentary. So yep. how much flexibility do you allow for a student or you know, maybe even think about the faculty member to adjust their identity? I mean, how, how important is it to sort of stand your ground and say, this is where I've pr- planted my flag. This is who I am and what I believe. And how much of this is an evolution based on the feedback that you receive from the brand identity that you're expressing? Yeah, well, I mean, the, 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 answer, the answer to that is I don't know. But, it's, but this, isn't, isn't, isn't that a great place to be finding out? You know, make, because, you know, maybe we've got a theory, a pet theory that we, we've got that kind of, you know, the undergraduate kind of certainty and confidence in. And we go, hey, no, this is the way to do this. I've, I know I've read a book on it. I've read three books on it. And then someone from the real world goes, actually, no, we should, that doesn't work. And here's why. It doesn't work now. Here's why. So what? So therefore, what can we evolve? And, 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 and that's the process of learning, isn't it? It's, it's that iterative process of here's an idea, here's a hypothesis. Um, okay, let's test this. And, and, and I think, it's, I mean, it's interesting. I think in, in what in, in that in that um, in that context, this is a great way to test some things. But also, I think a real value for the student 
is to have their have again maybe their maybe their kind of their their, 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 their raw ideas or their theory their highly theoretical ideas. Yeah, they, they haven't pressure tested in the with input from from um, from the marketplace, if you like. That's a great learning because that's going to happen you know, when they walk out the door with a degree. That's certainly going to happen. So if you can, if they can, that can be part of the process. I think that's a that's a re- that's a really positive thing, um, and you know, and also build, it builds their. I mean, we talked about the the idea of, of people's essence. It's a great way to build that, you know, to 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 to, um, to, to stress test and evolve and um, you know, and 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 temper if you like, uh, and and temp, temper temper their uh, in one sense just sort of um, uh, theory and actually blend you know expose that to practical application and reality and market realities and so forth early in the piece such that they when they when they when they a they get stronger through the process and learn more um and 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 b they they when they when they when they finally enter the marketplace whatever that looks like they're probably better equipped um and and also if we've done this well if the if as you say if the institution has engaged in this and encouraged this opening i think it actually says a lot of it, it creates value for the brand of the institution as well which is yeah which is hey we we you know we're, and I'm, I'm not, yeah, and I know we're not. I know we're not. I know academia doesn't see itself just as a uh, as a as a, as a breeding place for for people to go and get great jobs. I know that's it's not the only thing. It's one thing, and there's lots of other research and other things that are important. But for yeah. many people, that's a big part of it. That is. So you you provided a few answers to this question already, but I'm going to see if we can dig a little deeper. But in terms of you know why it's important to consider or help enable the development of a student's personal brand as part of their learning process and part of the outcomes that they receive uh, from this effort, you mentioned, well, this is a, a great way to find out who you are. This is a great way to test your learning, your thinking, uh, really you know, stress test uh, what you believe in and what you stand for. And by focusing on one's personal brand identity development, this is a way to accelerate that development, that personal yeah. development. Yeah. Are there any other reasons why you would emphasize or make a case for why it's important to build a student's personal brand identity? I think, I think, I think, I think that's, the, I think that's the, the, those are the, those are the main ones. Um, you know, I, I think, I think it's, it's the, I think if you can, if you can show up in your personal brand as who you really are, which means, you know, warts and all great ideas, you're authentic. Uh, you talk about what you're interested in. You talk about the problems you're working on. You talk about the solutions you think that, uh, the, the identify problems, identify solutions. And if you can do all that in your own personality, which is the essence piece, if you can do that and show up as who, who you really are, then it's extraordinarily powerful. And it becomes almost, if you like, a, an on an evolve an online consistent commentary of kind of where you are in life, um, in, in so in work and life. And I and, you know, and I um I always um, talk about this idea of what we want to do to be successful in life is is build our tribe, and it's attract to us that and it might only be a few hundred people, but the the, the group of people who are gonna who, who who value us might what they might employ us, they might advise us. Uh, they might support us when things that things are tough, but fundamentally, there's a group of people who we grow and evolve with, and it does it does change this group, this tribe, mm-hmm. um, and we move through life with that tribe. And as we say, if we keep moving through multiple jobs, maybe we live in multiple different countries, different roles, um, life goes well, life goes badly. You know, there's a whole load of different things that can happen. Um, but the brand, yeah, the, the brand sits right in the middle of that. Um, and as I, and, and, and when we get to the point where we can show up as who we really are, um, that is both, both extraordinarily attractive to the right people, the right tribe. And it's also actually becomes very enjoyable and very easy to actually write that content. And I think one of, you know, and uh, when we, and when we talk a lot about the content often with, you know, the, the, con- the content that we need that bring up, that brings our brand to life is really it's it's about commentary and describing what you're seeing the problems you're 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 you're, you're working on projects your uh projects that you're currently attracting your attention things that you things that you're doing well maybe things we're messing up you know we, we've, we've got this big tra- challenge in our in, in our sector right now um we tried this and it didn't work okay um but here's so w- this is what we did wrong but here's three things we think we're, the things are going to work and we'd love, love love to get some insights from other people what do you think that kind of conversational tone 
in our brand is lifelong. It's very authentic uh, and it actually becomes very easy, but also, um, you know, it, it, it actually, it, it will, it will keep that tribe piece moving for us and it, 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 it will keep it, keep us evolving as we, as we go from student through to, you know, what I called wise, wise elder. And mm-hmm. most people, so most people don't have a brand. Most people are put off by the idea of in some version of putting themselves out there. Many people have this mistaken I thinking that, you know, to, to, to create content and to have a personal brand or to become a thought leader, you've got to be Einstein and you, everything you say in your content has got to be amazing or you know, revelatory. And it, and it really doesn't. It's you know, to be, you can be a thought leader in your sector and in your, in your, in your marketplace and be very niche really just by having that ongoing conversation with the right intent. And the intent is, um, here's some problems I'm seeing. Here's some patterns we're think we're, we're kind of observing. Um, I'm not quite sure. I've, we haven't got all the answers. But here's three things we're thinking might be the way to go right now. That kind of tone, that's how what thought leadership looks like. And I mean, you know, and there's a, I know there's a thousand professors listening to this who probably could be doing this and aren't doing this. Um, and it's so powerful when, when we get that, when we get, we get that kind of, when we get that, um, when, when people can do that, it's very valuable for other people, but also for the individual, it's very valuable because you actually become attractive. You know, when you, you, you get invited to be on panels, you get job offers, maybe you get, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you, you attract funding or research funding, or there's a whole lot of benefits to it. Um, and I say, when you can get to that point where you can show up in your personal brand as who you really are creating content, that's really just describing what you're observing and doing. It's really powerful. It's fun. Um, and I think that, and it has, and it has great commercial value. So I'm not sure I answered your question, but that's, that's kind of how I see it. You did. I mean, the question was, you know, why, (laughs) why is it important to have students thinking in this direction? And I think you gave us uh, quite a, a a breadth of an answer there. What if we were to flip the script now, you, you mentioned the word tribe and the alma mater, you know, one's university is their tribe right? They have it down to the color, to the mascot, to the sports team. Yeah. What role does the student now play or what responsibility, if any, does the student play in contributing to the thought leadership of their university, of their tribe at the institutional level? Is there any kind of responsibility or thinking that you would advocate for in terms of how a student contributs to that? Yeah, I, I, th- I think I, I think I, I mean, it's a, it's a great idea, but I think I would say it's, I don't think they would have, a, I wouldn't say they have a responsibility. I'd actually flip it back and say, what is the, you know, what is the institution doing to, you know, to really make that something that you want to do? Yeah, you know, what, what's the, you know, and, and it come it come comes back to the, um, it comes back to the because there's you know, there's a question of you know, what 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 is a university's brand? How do we do? How do, how do we make that? How do we make that stand out? You know, and I think with so much of this, the whole it's an overused word, but at, at, at the heart of all of this conversation sits authenticity. Because I think when we talk about brand or personal brand, people kind of think, oh, I got to go. It's like some kind of makeover. I got to go and you know we got to put our best clothes on and we got to look put our Sunday best on and look like we're amazing all the time or, you know, we, 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 we're just fantastic all the time. And it's kind of shine the shiniest um, version of ourselves. And we want, we want our brand to be the best version of ourselves, but we also want it to be honest and authentic. Uh, you really describe stuff that's going on. Uh, and so I think that that cuts both ways. And I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the answer to the question. I think that means that, you know, in terms of the brand of an institution, you know, the, it shouldn't be, oh, we've got to brand ourselves. It's just, it should be, hey, we've got such a great culture. We've got so many great things going on. All we need to do is tell the world what we're doing frequently, openly, honestly. Here's a great project we've got. Here's some great things our students are doing. Here's a, an industry award we got because we, we solved some real problems. Here's some outreach stuff. We're doing. Here's some stuff we're doing in the not-for-profit sector. If, you just te- if you're doing that stuff, then the brand thing becomes very easy because you just tell your story openly and often. Now, to answer your question, if if an if an institution is doing that, you know, openly, often, uh, and doing it well, and with and with the right heart, and not with some kind of commercial, you know, angle, which is a probably a whole lot of the conversation, you know, then I think the the alma mater would be very happy to be involved and engaged, and you know, they're proud proud to be back in and go back and help young students, and you know, I think that it becomes a lovely a virtuous cycle, doesn't it? <clears throat> 
but it really it really i think it actually starts with it again it's got to be something you want to do not something there's some kind of sense of responsibility you know after you leave for the first year we expect you to you know show up on social media saying we're an amazing institution mm, no one's going to do that yeah I, i'm immediately thinking about both my role as a faculty member who helps designers and make that transition between senior year of, of design and then also my responsibility to help elevate the status or the reputation, the brand of the art department itself at the university. Yeah. And yeah. so the student senior exhibit is kind of a place, you talk about these intersections, this is a place where both of those things happen. It's a place for the student not only to showcase their voice, their yeah. point of view, you know, through the visual arts and media that they create, but it's also a way for the faculty and the university to kind of prop up themselves by showcasing the work of the students. And I think you see that yeah. also in uh, papers and publishing, uh, definitely at the graduate level, right, where people are, faculty are publishing white papers or maybe even yeah. appealing for Nobel Peace Prize um, recipients. So thinking in, about the faculty now, what other ways might the faculty make an investment or pursue this idea of brand building? How, how else might the faculty showcase their own expertise and thought leadership? Yeah, look, I, th I think uh, uh, for the faculty, I think a, a lot of, I mean, again, it, it would be interesting. I don't know the stats. I wonder how many faculty actually, actually have a, have a brand, have, have actually invested in their personal brand other than saying I'm, I'm professor such and such at you know, big university. And then, yeah. which is, which is impressive. And as we know, the way academia ranks itself and on which university you go to and, you know, oh, and that one, oh, that my one's, my university is slightly better than yours. All that, all that sort of that league table thing that goes on, which is kind of, which is kind of funny. Um, but, you know, just saying I'm professor something from such and such a university, the brand you're actually relying on is the brand of the university. It's Harvard or Stanford or, or Oxford or, or whatever. And the brand you're, you're actually you're actually saying no no the brand is it, it's Oxford that's very impressive and therefore because I'm a senior person at Oxford therefore I am impressive that's kind of the linkage there, and that's that's true but it's also um, it, it misses the opportunity I think for the for the actual for the individual to create their own their own brand um, which which both which complements the which complements the institution and it should complement it must must complement to some extent it can't be completely at odds with it. Um, but it's a missed opportunity because, you know, the, you know academics can and should be, you know, they, they, sh they, sh they should be creating that brand, telling, telling, telling the world what they're doing. I think, and I think one of the interesting things is that, uh, and it's, um, is that they pro where, where, where there's probably a need for a, a pivot or, or an adjustment or filtering, um, which I think probably is a good exercise is that the, the way, so is to is to translate academic if you like content with all the length and the breadth and the and the and the and the, um, uh, and the complexity and the references and so forth you just put, you put that on social media on linkedin no one's going to read it no one's going to read it because it's it's just too it's too it's too dense and probably too long um and yes so some people will read it but that's not mm -hmm. really the point of what you're going to be doing you want you want to you know, the, the, the opportunities to maybe take some things you're working on and say, how do we make this accessible? Or the key ideas, the key principles in here, or the key, uh, the, the key recommendation. How do we, how do we make that accessible to more people and test them as well? How do, here's some ideas, but why don't we put it, put this out in the world, see what the world thinks about them. Um, and I think, so that, that actually there is a, then is a challenge for academics to, to think about how they communicate and how they write. So how do, how do we, how do we smarten it down? How do we say in 5,000, how do we say in, you know, a 400 word short post, the three or four key elements of what might be, a, you know, the 10,000 word white paper. Um, so, and, and, and that, that's a really interesting, and there's quite a lot to that, but it is its own skill. You know, it's the brevity, it's the conciseness, but also it's the, it's the changing in palette. So we've got it, we've got it, we, we, it's got to be probably less formal. And I think there's a real, got a really a, a, a strong opportunity for academics to, to kind of think, how do I how do I write this in a different way? How do I write this in? Maybe, and maybe chuck, maybe I cut this up into ten different pieces. Yeah, here's ten little thought pieces based on my my dissertation or whatever, or some some big thing we're doing that might be useful to them. What do you think? And it's that that linguistic palette uh, switch. Uh, maybe they do little videos. 
Um, but fundamentally, how do you reinterpret your, and obviously they have deep subject matter expertise, but how do we reinterpret that and recut it from a communications perspective such that it works on, on, in, on um, platforms like LinkedIn and others? Because that's, I think if we can do that, that is super powerful. And, and yeah, we, you would know, I mean, there are some academics who've done that and gone on to be extraordinarily, um, inverted commas, famous because we know they're smart, but then they're actually, you know, they, they've also created that layer where they're able to, or the, so the capability were actually able to, to help people who aren't maybe university students to understand some of the concepts. And it's super, super very powerful. Um, so somewhere in that, I think there's a really good opportunity to rethink, rethink, um, rethink how, what you're saying, how you're communicating it. And, and, the, and by doing that, again, I think it'll be good for their own thinking. Uh, but also it will build their build their brand such that they're not just X, Y, Z from a professor, something from big university. They're actually that as, as but as well as that, they've got their own reputation. And I've worked with a, I've worked with a couple of uh, uh, university professors, uh, one, one particular Dr. Mark Williams. Um, and we, we, we took him from a, a, a professor of neuroscience at Macquarie university. Uh, and now he's running his own, um, running his own um, uh, sort of a business just written several books and, and a, a lot of the work we did was having to kind of say, well, no, he'd send me some, he'd send me some pieces and then uh, we've got to take all the references and stuff because that's just, no one's going to read that and we've got to really get to the essence of what you're thinking. And it's been fantastic. Yeah. So many good points in there. I'm going to highlight a few of them that I heard. Uh, <laughs> my, this my, ex- my, ex- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was great. What a, what a great full answer. And I, I will um, second this uh, hypothesis that you made, which is not many faculty or academics take the time to curate and develop their personal brand because we serve a lot of universities, a lot of degree programs, and we find ourselves advocating for this type of brand building for the faculty. And we're, we'll get to why that is important here yeah. in a moment. But you're right. They don't spend the time. They're leaning on just their title and just the institution's name as the thing that matters most. But of course, we know that it's just the, the first touch point. There's so much more beyond that, that a faculty or academic could be sharing with their audience, especially those prospective students. And this idea of parsing your long form written content or video content, smartening it down. We need to smarten it down. I just want to yeah. plug that. That is a great phrase. Yeah. I think everyone yeah. should use that. Yeah. And, and, and the point of view, as it changes form into this new palette, right? And, and, the, and the process of changing the palette in itself, I think is that that in itself is a necessary skill when it comes to the way that learners learn these days. In other words, you're going to hit your student or, or be in front of your student for maybe six to nine minutes at most yeah, yeah, <laughs> with the yeah. content that you have prepared for your lecture. And if it isn't smartened down and you don't know how to speak in this new digital language and currency, yeah. then yeah. you're going to be an ineffective educator. Is that yeah, fair to say? Right. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's 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 exactly that's exactly right. I mean, the the reality is is that in a in a busy, crazy digital world, we have to win the right to get someone's attention. Mm. Now, that might sound ridiculous, but I but I'm a professor, and they're students, and they've come in. That's true. That's true, and they should give you their attention, but you can't assume it, and you you certainly can't just say, look, you, you're going to sit, and I'm going to I'm going to smash you for an hour with a really heavy, dense uh, piece of thinking. Um, as you say, we, we've got we've got to, we've got to um, ch- change the palette, and it and, and off and often you know without going to massive, deal, often it's a case of summarising where you're trying to get to in the in you know, in, in the next in the next hour or you say the next. Yeah, well, here's where we're going today, and we we're, we're and we summarise that in the first minute. Create 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 a sense of what the destination is, and then when let's chunk that down, and then take and take people on a journey. And, and as you would know from the story brand piece, it's create a narrative, tell a story. Uh, that's not so that's not to make it childlike, but you know, take people on a journey. Um, and if we can do that with our content, um, you know, it, 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 it just it, say for, if, if, if very smart people and professors are very smart people, faculty are smart people. You know, it's the skill to say, oh, I know you're smart, but you've got to make it in a way that's accessible to me. If you can do that, 
that's a different form of, I mean, that, that's, that's much more valuable, really, other than me going, hey, I got, I got no, I, I guess you're really smart, but I got no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I mean, this is their own form of professional development, right, is, is, is learning yeah. this new skill, learning this new language. And if they can't yeah. do that, how, how effective are they going to be in the long term from an education standpoint or educator exactly. standpoint? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, I mean, I, I, was, I don't want, I don't want to sound like, uh, I'm not saying a uh, weak, uh, uh, dilute everything. I'm, it, right. I'm saying, yeah, the, 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 the full, the full, you know, the full blown academic piece with all the references that of course it has its place and it's sure. important, but it's about being able to shift gears, isn't it? Yes. Um, you know, the, the, you know, there's different, you've got to, you, you know, it's, it's what's the communication that we need for the audience we're trying to reach and the place we're trying to reach them. And what's the best way of, of what's the best way of doing that? And we've got to think about that. And it's not just saying, I don't care. Here's the way I do it. You, you, re you receive it, you receive it. I don't care how you receive it. I'm, I'm, I'm transmitting it like this. You pull the bones out of that. And some people will be able to do that. But if most people can't, then I'd say that that's, that's a failure of communication. Um, and as I say, coming back to the brand context, it's such a missed opportunity because there's yes. so many smart people with lots of resources who've got beautiful, wonderful ideas, amazing minds. And if they can change those gears, you know, smart and stuff down and, and put it out on social media in their own brand, I think there are extraordinary opportunities for them. Absolutely. And, and I think there are some great examples of that in today's age where like, you know, I'll follow someone based on the content on social. And then later I'll find out they're a PhD in neuroscience or they, they've written, yeah. you know, long form white papers, peer reviewed white papers in astrophysicists. I'm thinking of uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Yeah. And, and how he's able to take these huge cosmological astrophysicist concepts and break them down into these 60 second reels. It's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible, and it adds more credibility to his brand. But it also uh, allows him to um, maintain, I guess, the the authenticity or the authority of his study and his research, but make yeah. it, uh, it, it tra transmitted or deliver it in a way that is approachable and accessible. Yeah, yeah. So he's as I say, he's changing up and down the gears, which is yes. which is it is a, it's and it's a, and that's a, it's a. I think it's a great skill, and and, I, and if, if anyone's listening to this who doesn't has not started this, I, I you know, yes, you might it, it will feel a bit clunky and a bit weird at first, but I really encourage you to do it because I think I think it would I think it could be quite revelatory to people who've only academics who've only ever done sort of if you if for for, 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 for yeah if if you like long form academic stuff mm -hmm. in the, the 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 academic format if that's all you've ever done yeah. You know, I would say there's a you, you the, the 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 ability to rewrite to change gears in a different way, re, you know, re, reinterpret what you know, your content, your thinking, your theories um, in a different way is 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 a great way of learning. And 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 as, as we've talked about, it's a massive brand, massive benefits for your brand and commercial opportunities and com and community opportunities and so forth. Yeah, a, a reach, impact, right? Add, yep. Yep. add to the yep. list. Yep. Lots of reasons yep. why. I think we've convinced the faculty members listening. Let's talk awesome. now about from the administration standpoint and they're launching new degree programs or maybe they're running degree programs that are competitive with one another. I mean, how many online masters of business administration are out there now for a student to choose. And if they're not choosing purely based on the, the name of the university or the institution, they have to pick or choose for other reasons. This is why having a identity or a brand for your degree program is important. Uh, but, but why else might it be important for an administrator to really figure out how to differentiate or build a brand identity for their degree program or program of interest? Well, I think I think you've answered your own questions because uh, they want to get bums on seats. They want to they want to <laughs> they want to enroll they want to enroll they want to want to enroll students, and they should do it. And this, yeah, I don't know if this sounds naive um, or idealistic. Um, you know, the it's I think it's really it's really in yeah. I'd start I'd start I'd start it the other way. Yeah, is your if is your is your MBA program? You know, is it awesome? And if it's not awesome, make it awesome. And once it's awesome, then go and tell the world about it and tell and why it's awesome you know mm. if you just if you just come up with some cookie cutter here and it, we've all seen the you know we've seen those show reels of multiple mbas and you know some campus shot or whatever some version of it. but if they're all same same 
um, then as you say, where's 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 the dis- where's the distinction? And why would someone choose you versus someone else? And then what do they choose? And they choose on price, or do they choose on reputation? Yeah, there's a, there's all that sort of thing. Um, but and also, if, you know, if, and if also if you if you're projecting something that isn't true, how many people are going to come along and say, and they're going to drop out, or they say, well, oh, you said it would be this, and it's that. Right. I mean, the the brand ultimately the brand thing is actually quite easy um because it's really it's really just to tell, it should it's about telling the story of what actually exists and is authentic uh so if you haven't got if you haven't got a good brand story to tell you haven't got a good story to tell so yeah, yeah and, it, and if that's and if that's where you are and you're stuck at then okay we'll get some pr people and we'll we'll put lipstick on a pig and say it's amazing and if it's not but i'd say you know again maybe this sounds make your course amazing yeah. um and that doesn't that and that and and coming if if we take pull on some of the things we've talked about today um maybe making it amazing is not in terms of the curriculum but it's in the the way the curriculum's brought to life maybe it has more social media elements maybe there is more interaction with local businesses maybe um you know m- m- maybe maybe um it's 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 done in a way that is more um imaginative or contemporary or there's there's yeah, I don't think I don't, the con. I don't think it's necessarily the content needs to be any different, but it's it's the or the, so the curriculum needs to be any different. But how do you bring it to life for students mm-hmm. and and the student experience, the customer experience? If you can do that well, which is and those things are not necessarily big money or investment things. They're mindset things. They're cultural things. If you can build a great culture around your um, your degree or your program, then the brand story, I think, actually looks after itself so i hope that doesn't sound evasive but i think that's the reality because yeah a brand first and foremost needs to be authentic it's not authentic it's just false isn't it and then sooner or later someone's going to call it out and say well that's you said it was this and then it was that it's like yeah we go on a holiday and it looks amazing the hotel looks amazing it's got the beautiful blue sea an amazing facility then you get there and it's a bit run down and the sea's brown not blue and hold on that's 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 not what you sold me and it's inauthentic. So I think, yeah, you know, I'm mixing a few things up there, but I think uh, it's start, you know, create a great program first and then selling it will be easy. Yeah. And, and I think we can scaffold what we've been talking about to this point in the sense that it is a group effort, meaning if you focus on developing the advocate, the brand advocate at the student level, And helping them find their voice and share the content and have that perspective and that commentary. And then you're encouraging your faculty to do the same and empowering them. Then all of a sudden you have the student and faculty within your program making it awesome. (laughs) And the story is unfolding itself. So in a way, it's it's a very holistic thing. And if everyone's playing their part, then it kind of the problem answers itself. I, I agree absolutely, and and interesting, and and you've summarised it really, 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 really nicely there, in. But I th- and I think the point is, and everything I heard there, and I I tend to, yeah, I'm a commercial guy, so I look at things through a commercial lens. Everything you said there um, is is achievable to probably anyone listening to this. The, the, this nothing you said is oh by the way, all you need to do is throw in a million dollars. There's no, there, you know, there's no, you know, there's no, there's no uh, we, uh, when we. This is this is a mindset and cultural activity and, and investment uh, yeah, investment of our time and goodwill and energy thing. It's not a oh you need a gazillion dollars to do this thing. Yeah, that's that, that's which hopefully to people listening that both inspires them but also challenges them because no one listening to this has got an excuse for why that can't be done. Yeah, well as you know, everyone needs a good guide. And they may have signed off or, or bought into this idea of why it's important, but how, Mark? Well, how, how might our audience, if they're struggling with this challenge, how might they find an answer or find a good guide? Is there any resource or way that you could help them? Yeah, so there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, couple, there's a couple of things um, that uh, I'd love to make available to people listening to. So the, 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 the fir- and we'll, we'll, put a, we'll put a link to all this in the, in, in, in the show notes. The first is um, I've, got, I've devised a, a short diagnostic uh, it takes it takes about ninety seconds. You answer nine questions about your what, what you're currently up to in terms of your brand, and then you get a personal brand report, uh, which is about twenty pages, uh, and it tells you where you are on what I call the influencer dial. And the influencer dial has five um, five five levels. It goes from asleep to agitated to active to amplified to awesome. So we'll find out where you are on, from the asleep 
which means sleep is like, I have no brand. There's nothing going on. Please don't contact me. Um, to awesome, uh, which is like, I'm all over this stuff and it's amazing. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, you, you'll get, you'll get a report, tell you where you are, tell you what some things to get you going from where the level you are to, to the, the logical next things to do. Um, there's also, um, there's also a free resources of workbook. It's called uh, it's called unlocking your value, and it takes you through a process because I think a lot of people, um, yeah, a, a lot of a lot of us, we struggle to really uh, articulate exactly you know, what it is we bring uh, to the world. So there's a, there's a piece that we talk about. Un un unlock your value, it sort of it enables you to pull out different things in different ways such you actually oh, actually I'm quite good at that and that's something I can talk about oh, actually maybe that is quite a unique thing that's that I'm really good at that so that's another thing that is helpful um I'd love to um I'd love to uh I, I've written a book called time to shine um which is um it's actually and it's it, apart from being my mother's favorite book the interesting thing about time to shine is it's actually a, it's a compilation so I write content uh, what I've done is created a compilation around 100 blogs that I've written over the last uh, sort of six or seven years. And it's a good example. Um, so and the, 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 the articles themselves are uh, good examples of you know, building thought leadership, building confidence, building influence, uh, very much the things that we've been talking about today. So they'll be relevant in that sense. But also it's a great way for you actually to see how content works. So I've published these things as LinkedIn articles individually. Then I've uh, then I've compiled them into 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 uh, a book, and it's a great way you can build content uh, and repurpose content. Uh, so that's great. But I'd love to give you all a free ebook version of that if you're interested. Uh, and lastly, if anyone's interested in um, in uh, getting specific uh, guidance uh, to be a guide, if you like, about helping you to build your personal brand or working with your institution to really understand the opportunities and um, and, and how personal brand uh, and brand generally is, is a good thing, both for the individual and the organization. For all the reasons we've spoken about, um, then also very happy to have a discovery call with you. So there's a link in the in the notes to how you can book a time or spend half an hour or so talking, working out where you are, where you're trying to get to, and potentially how we may be able to help you to do that and accelerate that. Um, so yeah, those, those, are some, those are some great, uh, all, all those are free resources I'd love to make available to anyone listening to this. Oh, that's excellent. That's very generous. Thank you for sharing that. We'll make sure to link to each of those items. And yeah, I mean, your degree program, your faculty, your institution at large, they all will benefit. There are some significant long-term benefits to doing this hard work. I call it work on self, but going through yeah. this, this brand activation, this branding process, it's difficult. It takes time. Uh, but with these resources, I'm sure anyone can make progress and really reap the rewards of those long-term benefits that we've outlined today. Uh, so thank yeah. you for that, Mark. Thanks for your time today. It's been a real pleasure. We could talk brand all day. I know that, but uh, we'll have to call it. We'll have to call it here. Awesome. Thank you. And really, really enjoyed speaking. And I hope that's been helpful to you guys. And yeah, and just a final thought, It uh, you know, uh, the hardest part is getting started. Uh, once you get going, it's actually believing this becomes pleasurable and the, the, you'll, you'll think, uh, you'll learn, you'll evolve, you'll grow and learn to enjoy it and all the benefits that come out of this. Uh, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Have a crack. Go for it. <laughs>